Landboards presents Digital Potentiometer. In this video, we'll take a look at replacing a multi term potentiometer with an equivalent digital circuit. Here's a typical multi turn pot. Here's the pot on Mauser. Uh, they tend to be pretty expensive parts. If you want to use a multi turn pot in a circuit, low, like say an electronic load, it has one really huge downside to it. Although it can give you pretty precise control over the resistance you want and therefore the DC load, the really big downside is that you can't reset it to zero when you power up the load. So the load will turn on at whatever the previous load value you had set. That can be a very bad thing. So here's a replacement for a multi-turn pot. It's a nice, small, little compact circuit card, not much bigger, maybe even smaller than the multi-turn pot. It has one uh, huge advantage though, because it's an electronic pot, when it comes on, it can be set to come up to any setting you want. In this case, you can make it come up to zero, which makes it great for use with electronic loads. Here's the bottom side of the electronic pot. On it, you can see that there are two connectors. The connector on the left is the standard wiper connector with the two outer connector connections that a pot would have. And the connection on the right is the power connector because you have to power this electronic resistor. The connector on the right is also a programming interface for programming the set values for the resistor. The electronic pot uses a rotary encoder. This particular rotary encoder also includes a switch. This switch can be used to reset the pot back to the original condition to save turning the knob all the way around. Rotary encoders come in 12 or 20 clicks per turn as typical values. Rotary encoders are also commonly available parts and are quite a bit less expensive than multi-turn pots. So let's take a look at the circuit design for the electronic potentiometer. Here's the overall schematic. In the bottom is a small microprocessor. In the upper left is a programming header and in the right upper corner is a digital pot. Let's look at each of these in sections. The microprocessor being used is an ATtiny85 microprocessor. On the left side of the page is the rotary encoder and those two bits out of the rotary encoder on the A and B lines go to two digital inputs on the ATtiny85. The ATtiny85 can also be programmed with the Arduino IDE, which makes it really easy to do development for the circuit. And if you press the reset button, or the button on the rotary encoder, it resets the microprocessor. The circuit uses a digital potentiometer to perform the potentiometer function, and the three control lines, chip select, clock, and data in, come out of the microprocessor, so it directly sets the values of the digital pot. P1 is the potentiometer connection. The final section here shows the 6-pin header, which is the ISP connection for programming the ATtiny from the Arduino IDE. Rather than a typical 2x3 connector, 1x6 connector was used to save board space, so an adapter cable is required to program it from a typical ISP connector cable. The circuit card layout is pretty tight with the microprocessor on one side of the card and the digital potentiometer on the reverse side of the card. The digital potentiometer is wedged between the circuit card it's on and the bottom of the rotary encoder switch. This still leaves plenty of lead length for the rotary encoder pins to protrude through the circuit card. It does sit a little bit off the card, but it's really no issue. Also, you would probably mechanically fasten the rotary encoder to whatever enclosure you're putting it in so the mechanical stresses would not affect that to the card and the cabling. Let's take a look at the digital potentiometer code. The rotary encoder code is based on David Johnson Davies' demo for the ATtiny85 running at 1 MHz. The code is set up to be interrupt driven so that any change in the knob will cause an interrupt and that will be processed to determine the next value that the pot should receive. This is the setup code for that function. Because all of the code is interrupt driven, there is literally nothing that happens inside of the loop. It's all done within the interrupt routines. Here's the interrupt routine where all of the magic happens. If the knob is turned left or right, it 
encodes a different value into the two encoder bits and puts them in a different order. And this function looks to see what the last state was and determines what direction the rotary encoder was turned and performs the proper operation off of that turn. The ISR calls the function change value and passes a value of minus or plus one depending upon the direction of the knob turn. The function change value runs the number between zero and the max count of the D to A converter. The function then calls another function write pot value. Write pot value takes the 16-bit value that was passed to it and creates the command word and the bits that need to go out to the digital pot. It calls the function write pot bit to set each bit one at a time. And finally, the function write pot bit jiggles the clock and data lines into the digital pot, writing out the value that was sent to it a bit at a time. So this design definitely meets the original design objective of having a pot that could be reset at power up. But how does it do with other performance features? One of the nice features of this design is that when you press the button on the rotary encoder, it does reset the microprocessor and set the value of the digital pot all the way back to the zero position. That's a great feature to have. Um, sure beats turning a knob around quite a few times to get back to the zero position. This brings up two related questions. How multi-turn is this solution? And what is the precision of each click of the rotary encoder? Encoders typically come in 12 or 20 clicks per rotation of the knob. Digital potentiometers can be seven, eight, or even more bits. Let's pick for our example, 12 click per turn encoder and a seven bit digital pot. So 128 count D to A and 12 positions for rotation works out to just a little bit over 10 turns. This compares quite conveniently to a analog 10 turn pot. But how about the precision? That might be an issue in some cases. The precision in this case is the change in value per click. But don't let the clicks confuse you. The precision is only a function of the number of D to A bits that are available. So a seven bit digital pot only has 128 positions available, or maybe 129 if they support a zero function. So let's look at the real world example of a digital load and see what this precision limitation means and what effect it has in the actual operation of a device. So suppose you want to have a zero to three amp range on your digital load. At 128 steps, the three amps divided by 128 stamps would be 23 milliamps per step. If that's acceptable, then the part will work great. So here's our test setup for demonstrating the digital potentiometer function. Our bench power supply is set to five volts and the current limiting is shut off. So basically any amount of current can go up to three amps. Our DC load is shown in the bottom right hand corner here. Details are left for another video. Uh, the voltmeter is set for the milliamp range. And here in the bottom front is the digital pot which we're testing or demonstrating. The zero point is set for 35 milliamps, but you can see the step from the zero of 35 to 47 milliamps to 59 milliamps to 72 milliamps. So about 13 milliamps per step with this particular setup. You can also see it would be impossible to hit exactly 100 milliamps with this setup. This clip shows the ability to auto zero at power on. The current is 196 milliamps currently, and we're gonna disconnect the power cable here. It's a little hard to grab it. And we plug it back in, and the current goes down to 96 milliamps, which is the value we've set this to come up at. Pressing the reset button, the center button of the rotary encoder shows that the value doesn't change because this is the zero value. Here we've set the load to 198 milliamps and we press the center button of the digital potentiometer and the value goes down to the 99 milliamps which is our zero value. So to summarize, we did build a working digital pot. It is programmable from the Arduino IDE and it is resettable at power on or with a button but there are limitations on its precision. If you want more information, you can see our wiki pages for these products, and we have YouTube videos on them as well. We have a store in Tindy where we sell all of these cards. Thanks for watching our video, and if you enjoyed it, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe.